Hey YouTube, it's Rocky from This Cruise Life. I am here today to walk you through the process of what it's like to check in for your MSC cruise. We just went through this process as we were getting ready to set sail on the MSC Meravelia, and we love documenting what that is like because you never know what's gonna come up and what you're gonna have to answer for questions. So if you stick around for this video, you're gonna see all of the things that we go through and what it takes to get ready for your MSC cruise. Let's go. We're gonna start by clicking this beautiful button that's titled Go to Web Check-In. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we have arrived at the web check-in for this cruise, and you'll see it's gonna start off immediately by asking us some health questionnaire for our check-in. Please note that if you are completing the web check-in, it does not guarantee that any form of priority during embarkation. You must use the same identity documents that you will use on embarkation day, which of course makes sense. Uh, they will be checked at the cruise terminal and during boarding. And in order to receive your e-tickets, you must complete the web check-in. It must be paid in full, and you must be within 20 days of your cruise departure. Great news, we are with we are meeting all of those criteria, so it looks like we are good to go. Uh, it does specify that you must enter your details below to access the health questionnaire passage contract and web check-in. Check-in is no longer available once you get within 48 hours of your cruise. So you can see below that we have all of our details for our cruise, including our booking number, the departure port, the ship, the stateroom, as well as our sailing details and dates. All right, in order to get started, we're going to select the individual passengers to check in, starting with myself. All right, as we arrive at the passenger data information, you can see it looks for personal information such as gender, place of birth, nationality, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and fill out all these details for you so you don't have to sit here and watch it, and we will continue in just a moment. All right, I have filled out my passport information. And now I'm going to scroll down to the following details of what it's looking for. The next set of details looks for your contact information. So it already pre-filled in with my email address and phone number, which it pulled from when I created the reservation at the start. Uh, so I don't need to actually type in the information, but it's always a good idea to review the details that are inputted there to make sure that they are current and correct. Next up, it's going to make sure that your address information is correct. You're going to select your country, insert your postal code, and click on Find to autofill the address information. Uh, if you are your traveling companion lives in the same address, well, that's interesting. It's probably if you or your traveling companion lives in the same address as you, uh, use the drop down to select their um, information in the list, and the address details will autofill. Next, it's going to ask for the contact information in case there's an emergency. And then at the very bottom of the page for the first passenger, it's going to have you check some boxes on whether you have read the privacy policy, as well as if you'd like to register for special offers and news from MSC Cruises. Now, I've already signed up for those special offers using my email address, so I'm not going to select that. However, I am unable to continue with the registration process if I don't select the I have read the privacy policy. So let's go ahead and pull up that privacy policy now. And I'm gonna run through this in a pretty quick and sped up process, so uh, bear with us. I've reached the end of that, so I'm going to scroll back up to the top and head on back over to the rest of the check-in process. Now, I do want to advise you that if you select the privacy policy and wish to read through it, there is no easy way to come back to the check-in process. So upon hitting the back arrow on my browser window, it actually took me back to the start of the check-in process. So I had to go through and re-enter all of those details. Not a big deal, but it's a little frustrating. You would think that the privacy policy would open up in a separate window. Uh, so you may want to look at opening it using control click uh, in the future if you are going through this experience. Uh, not a big deal. You didn't have to put in a ton of information, but it's still kind of frustrating. All right, so I have also moved myself to the top of the screen, as you can see, because um, I was covering up some pretty important buttons at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and select next as I'm ready to move on to the next bit of information. 
That takes me back to the top of the page where uh, you can see passenger data is no longer the uh, tab that we're on, and now we've moved on to embarkation info. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down just a little bit so you can see what that looks like. All right, so you can see here we've got our embarkation time slot. The time frame is set by default, but you are welcome to change it to the one that suits you best. Please note, it can vary. Let's take a look and see what our options are. Oh. It looks like we can actually get to the ship a little bit earlier than what we're currently scheduled. So instead of 10 to 10.30, I'm going to change this time to 9.30 to 10. As you can see below that, the next option is who are you traveling with? Are you going to travel with friends and family? Uh, you can add their booking or cabin number so that they can assist with the same dinner table. The assignment is not guaranteed and the onboard staff uh, it conf confirmation is needed, and there's another spelling error. It says Ono Board. I'm not sure what that actually is. Um, we are not traveling with anyone else for this cruise. Maybe someone will end up joining uh, later on and we'll be surprised by their appearance. But as of right now, in the booking process, we do not have another travel partner, so I'm going to move on. And the next item of requirements here is to accept the contract. Uh, you do need to accept the terms and conditions on behalf of and with the consent of all persons named in the booking. I'm going to go ahead and open this up right now so we can take a look at that. Uh, perfect. 49 pages. Here we go. Oh, it looks like they actually draw your attention to specific sections that they want you to look at, which is great. We've seen this happen with several other cruise lines. I know when Mark went through his process with Norwegian Cruise Lines, uh, they did send him to specific sections to call out. So uh, very helpful. Let's see how this goes. That was a long read. Let's head back over to the booking site and finish this process. All right, I have come to the end of that. I can now click, I accept the contract. And next up, it's gonna ask for a color passport style photo that is required for safety purposes. And they want us to refrain from wearing sunglasses, hats, caps, or any other items that may hinder my recognition. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these, pause the video and take this photo. So bear with me one moment. All right. And we are back. Um, you can see my mug down there in the lower left corner. Don't I look like just a happy cruise passenger? All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next steps of this process. Ta-da! Perfect! So it looks like they have completed the process for checking in myself. Uh, you can see that I have two bluish colored check marks next to passenger data as well as embarkation information. And now it's time to move on to the second passenger in the booking. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started now. All right, welcome back. I had Mark come downstairs and complete his uh, boarding process information as well. Uh, so his picture has been taken. He also received two check marks and it immediately after completing his part of the process took us to the screen that you see now, travel documents. You have successfully completed the passenger registration for all passengers. Please download your tickets or the embarkation forms before your cruise. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can take a look at what that looks like. So here on the screen, you can see there is the ticket spot where you can have the tickets e emailed or sent to you as an e-ticket, which includes the embarkation form with your personal information to be checked and luggage tags. I'm going to go ahead and have this sent over to Mark's email because his computer is currently hooked up to the printer. So it'll be a little bit faster and easier that way. Okay, my second option is I can download the embarkation form. So the embarkation form is the document that gives you permission to board the ship. Please click on download to get yours. So now I'm able to select a passenger to check in through the health questionnaire and web check-in. You'll see here we have both of the passengers as well as those wonderful check marks that indicate that we have completed the check-in process. In general, it was a pretty quick check-in process. I was pretty pleased with how that went. As you can see at the end of the check-in, we have the opportunity to either email those e-tickets off or we could just print them directly from the computer ourselves. Uh, upon opening up the documents, I did go through it. It's about a 24-page attachment uh, with all sorts of things from your boarding documents that you'll need to present at the terminal building when you arrive for your cruise, as well as your luggage tags, which is always fantastic 
great to have those. Um, and then some other general information about the sailing that you're gonna be on. Oh, and don't forget one other thing is the health questionnaire. It is actually a handwritten document that you'll need to fill out. You'll check mark whether you have been feeling ill in the last several days or not. Um, and all of that gets turned over to the Port Authority when you arrive for your cruise. So just a few things to think about and keep in mind as you go through this uh, check-in process with MSC Cruises. But overall, it was really fast, really easy, really streamlined. Just a couple of those notes that I mentioned earlier, when you do go to look at the privacy policy, the terms and conditions and all of those things, you'll wanna open those up into a separate window because pressing the back button, as I did a couple of times, uh, brought me back out to the very start of the enrollment process, and that can be a little frustrating. Anyway, that's all I got for you right now for MSC check-in. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this information useful and helpful for your check-in process with MSC. If you have any questions, any comments, anything at all about MSC that you'd like to share, drop it in the comments below. We would love to chat with you. Uh, we do our best to respond to all comments that come through. And if you haven't done it already, I'd love if you could like this video, press that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you can be aware of any other content that we have coming out to our channel in the near future. Until we see you out on the seas, take care.